All right, Golden. So here we have some posers with us. Greta Rose, who taught last night, and um, my partner, Anthony, is here. And then my wiener dog, Albert, is also in the room dressed like a pineapple. So if you see him running around, that's what's going on. Yes, I, that's why I brought him. I was just so hoping that he would be an, a, a object of comfort <laughs> to all of us. So it's his best skill set. Well, welcome, everyone. A lot of you I know personally, and some of you are newer to me, but I really appreciate that you're here through all of this troubleshooting. Um, I'm learning a lot about how to be on camera and how to be authentic, et cetera, and so on. So I just appreciate all of you as we work through this and as we take our time um, to make this happen. But if you have to step away or hit pause or whatever and you want the rest of class, I am going to record it. It'll go up on YouTube probably later this afternoon when I have enough bandwidth at my house. Um, so you'll have it if you need it. But welcome, everyone. It's so nice to have you here. Um, Let's get started in a seat, whatever feels like a nice, tall, comfortable seat for you. And I thought that today I would just offer a little bit of, you know, context around non-attachment. I have to say that I think that non-attachment is really a form of kindness. It's really based on kindness, the ability to be kind enough to any idea or any reaction or any experience you're having. Um, to roll with it in a certain way, to be able to let things change and not get our identity caught in one place that we can't transition from. And I don't really think that's easy, and I don't really know how to master it, but I do know how to practice it. And so that's my offering, is that we might take the time to just practice letting ourselves move from one transition to another. And I'll say that beyond kindness, the one thing that I think might be essential to be able to do this work is... Um, a sense of self-power, self-agency, self-sovereignty that you can, right? Even though there will always be the part of you that doubts, the part of you that is intelligent enough to be skeptical and sort of look at things in the reality of the world, uh, that there's also the part of you equally, the balanced part that feels strong and capable. And I mean, we look at Dharma in this context of like what our work is in this world and karma as like the unfolding forward movement of a fate we can't predict. This is it, right? This is how it is right now, right? And I have this stupid tattoo on my arm from the Ram Dass book of being here now. And I think a lot about that concept of how can we be here? How can we be with our experience? Because this is where we are. And so I offer that the breath is always happening right now. And that can be a way that you can tether back. How are you breathing? Are you breathing? For the most part, I'm going to give pretty straightforward instructions. I'll offer a lot of audio sort of cues and things like that so that you have the option. But let yourself be powerful enough to be creative, rest when you need to, change the practice. Heck, you could lay on your back and take a seat for the whole time and be doing the work. Let's begin by uniting with three rounds of the seat sound of OM. And I offer you to OM no matter where you are. And know that there's a little bit of a dope quantum entanglement that even though we're separated, making the same vibrational sound brings us together. All right. Close the eyes, let your hands drop in any position that doesn't draw too much unneeded attention to them. You can down past the gaze one spot on the earth. Take a moment to notice how you're sitting, where the tension patterns have crept in, where things are more broad or spacious. And how things are a little bit around you. The temperature of air in your skin, maybe sun in your face. To clear and prepare the energetic channel of your body, take a big free inhale in through your nose and open your mouth to exhale, HA. Inhale, prepare for OM. Seat, rely on your back or your belly, compression in the knees is not for you today. The work 
rotate you to a different grounding position. Take it. You can take your arms out one in front to let your elbows rest down a little wider than your shoulders. Take your hands back by your hips and put your palms up. Take a few moments to relax your body again and to take your arm to let gravity pull on you. And as you begin to pay attention to how things really are, begin to notice the sensations as they emerge and dissipate from this field of your awareness. And take time to notice what is. You might start with the external sensations like sights and sounds, smells and tastes, temperatures, textures. You might notice the body a powerful tool for sensation where things are compressed or extended where things are um, a little more easy, where you find contraction in the muscles, where you feel the pressure of the earth pressing back up into you. You might notice your organs doing their work, the gravity of your body, your heart pumping blood with your veins, your lungs filling and filling with breath. And perhaps you pay attention to the mood or quality, the attitude. And maybe times right now are bringing up moods, qualities, and attitudes that are new. You know, this opportunity to adapt and expand to new stimulants, the way our bodies physiologically respond, the way our psyches grow, and the way life forms over time, to pressure, to experience. Notice your thinking mind, one of our greatest evolutionary attributes, your ability to think and perceive and use your perception to survive, to decide and discern. But the thinking mind is so powerful, so many thoughts. Just notice what it is you're thinking. And if there's any pattern to the thought, like judgment or critique, or maybe narrative or storytelling, maybe image. Perhaps you're working with time, meaning the past. The future. And the idea is all of that's going on, we're still able to observe it. The work is to not identify that which we observe, to see it as um, part of everything, as it were, as opposed to part of our individual self. And kindness is the way. Kindness is the way that we figure out how to be with things that are difficult to be with. So if we can be to move towards kindness, to make space for honesty and authenticity. We'll move next into the Ujjayi breath. I always want to take a moment to pause for consent. I do folks in the room, no one is really touching anyone right now, but there's this new consent that's happening about being in space with one another. I just want to acknowledge sort of a, a liminal experience of consent. Take a moment to sort of seek self consent. Right? Are you going to honor what your body asks to, what your mind asks to, the way that you would ask any teacher to honor your own? Um, agency, your own need for space or need for closeness. And then let's find the breath inside of that context of power. Exhale here, you have in your lungs to empty. And take a slow inhale into your nose, spread the belly wide and then the rib cage, and maybe up into the chest and hold your breath softly and mostly full. Open your mouth to exhale, HA. And inhale slow and again through your nose. Breathe into the back of your body, your low back and kidneys, your back rib cage, and your shoulder blades, and hold it softly at the feet. And open your mouth to exhale, HA. Ujjayi Pranayama, the psychic, your upward liberating breath. Inhale in through your nose, slowly snoring. Spread the breath three dimensionally throughout the course of your torso and hold it softly at mostly full. Seal the lips inside the breath out through your nose. That's the HA feeling with your nostrils. And continue to practice breathing in this way. Inhale into your nose, snoring and spreading. Exhaling out through your nose, emptying and sighing. And continuing to breathe in a pattern that feels authentic for you. Now my best advice about breath is sometimes anxiety can live in the breath. So as you control the breath, let it be more like a conversation with your breath, as opposed to something that comes down from the top of patriarchal control and structure. See if instead it can be a collaboration. There's no need to fight or force the breath to be different. Relax the breath into differentness. Invite the breath into changing over time. 
little by slowly as you find a breath stride and you can pay attention to like a thread, like a beacon, begin to slowly add movement into your chest, both riding the waves of the lower breath. You might go to the edges, wiggle your fingers and toes. You might be closer into center, rocking the forehead on the mat, or rolling the hips on the heels. And slowly over the next three to five breaths, maybe six or seven, and start to draw yourself forward and upward. Take your time. There's no rush. And as you start to draw towards hands and knees, you might move that shape around a little bit too. Rock from front to back and side to side. You might turn your fingers out to the long edges of your mat for a couple of breaths or from side to you know, the head. Shoulders or both toes. Sometimes a knee needs to straighten or a pelvis needs to wiggle. You allow yourself to create as you go. Take your time. Take your time. Take your time. Take your time. To work uh, right into the center of kindness and the heart will do some shoulder work and to work into everything else to work in with it. So press down to your right hand and inhale your left arm. Out and up when you're ready, you can reach out and spin your rib cage left, and then exhale to thread the needle underneath and behind the outer legs, and come to your shoulder here, or jaw, and breathe here. Now, there's a lot of ways to do this work, and maybe you have a preference or intention right away. You're welcome to keep your right hand where it is, and press it into the ground, and extend the elbow out of leverage, or walk the arm out long, and child's pose. Reach it up, or thread the needle, maybe there's other variations that you work with or things that occur to you. Sometimes we prioritize the twisting of the rib cage to the right. Sometimes we prioritize the compression of the left shoulder blade or the left shoulder joint to the delta right in front of the arm. Return your right hand to the mat if you moved it near your nose. And inhale, keep your left arm back out and then out and push you upward. And exhale to tabletop, two hands on your other side. Heavy in your left hand, inhale your right arm out and then up, reaching upward. And thread the needle on the exhale, and bring it to the eye, and on your shoulder here, or jaw, and breathe. Now allow yourself to breathe with you. It might be the same from side to side, but it can be different. Feel this up. I'm really sorry. The uh, music makes it really hard to hear you speak. And return your left hand to the mat near your nose if you move it. And then move your right arm back to the sky. All in the mat, reaching upward. And exhale, two hands to the earth, to the top. All right, take your hips to your heels, like a little bit of a hero seat for a moment, and take your hips off to the right and bring your legs out around in front of you. We're gonna do a little deer or stag pose. So take your front uh, right knee and you can drop it out. Melissa, right. Melissa, can you hear me? Angles in front of you. And you'll turn to the right and hold over your right foot, over your knee, and you can turn all the way to the right into a twist and come down to the hands or forearms. If you have a cushion or a stack of books, you can come down there. Melissa! Melissa! In a shape, and the back knee is turned inward, thigh bone in the hip sockets. The music makes it really hard to hear you. Good. So we're doing this stag shape that's uh, turned out like that. You're welcome to roll in either way. If you want to do a different posture, it's super chill. So give yourself permission to do that work. We're only going to be here for another minute. In your next uh, couple of breaths, you can press into your hands and lift your upper body up. You can bring your knees back upright. Plant the soles of your feet on the mat about mat's distance in front of you with your knees bent. Bring your hands behind you and lift your chest up and bring your head back like you're trying to show your face to the sun. Oh yeah. And if you lifted your hips up off the ground, you can bring them back down to the earth. 
then wedge your leg or your knees from side to side a couple of times. Just drop them up behind. And then feel to drop your both legs over to the left. And you can have your right knee close to your left heel, both knees at about a 90 degree bend. Your left thigh bone is turning out to drop down, right thigh bone is turning in. You can turn and fold your body down over your foot into hands or forearms. You can come over your knee or over your thigh. You can come all the way down to the earth. And relax your head and neck if it's available. You can't hear, okay, thank you. I wonder why. Hmm. Hmm. Music not good. Okay, any luck now? Is everyone else not hearing me at all? Is that what's happening actually? Okay. I don't know why. I have no idea why you can't hear me. But we can hear you, Alyssa. It's just the music. The mic picks, yeah. the music picks it up so I go over there. All right. Yeah. Cool. Thank you, friends. That's good to know. I will stay far away. Can you hear me now? Is it chill now or do you like the music off? Do you think music off is best? Uh, maybe down. Yep, you got it. I'll turn it down. Okay. All right. Press yourself up and come to a seat. Roll all the way down onto your back. Yeah, there we go. Thank you so much for all that troubleshooting. It's so nice to have a response from you. That's really why I prefer doing it this way. Thank you. All right, once you're down on your back, bend your knees and put your feet on the ground. And from here, I'm going to offer a little bit of bridge work. So press your heels down and exhale, push your lower back down. And inhale, lift your hips up, roll back, roll back. Maybe all the way up to your shoulders. You might roll your shoulder blades together underneath you. You're welcome to tuck your chin or lift your chin up. And then notice how much effort is really required and where the pertinent work is. It's a little pressure in the lower back, but nothing you see. Maybe a little opening in the front side, the thigh. The next couple of exhales, unwind your fingers and slowly roll yourself down one more time. Yeah. Once your exhale hits, you might be shoved by your knees by dropping them side to side and back and forth, pulling some things up. Then gather slowly your knees into your chest and give yourself a bit of a squeeze. And you have some options. In five or six breaths, we're going to make our way towards tabletop position once more. You might rock and roll from neck to tail. You might roll to one side and press yourself up. And a couple of other alternatives, perhaps. But finding your way to a tabletop as you're ready. I'll start to move into cow cat breathing. So if you get there a little early, you know what's up, feel free to head in. If you want to take your time in transition, I encourage that. It's good to practice. A literal change in the way that we need to mindfully in a way that we can adjust to and be aware. When you're ready, inhale to cow pose, drop your belly and your ribs, lift your chin, your tailbone up, and exhale into cat pose, tuck your chin, round your spine, and your shoulder. Follow your breath, inhale, cow pose, open the front seat. Exhale to cat, curl, compress, and round. Good, inhale, cow pose. Exhale, cat pose. Inhale, cow pose. Exhale, cat pose. And the next time you inhale into cow, curl your toes under, and move into down dog. Spin your hips up and back, exhaling your heels low. You might start to walk out your dog, bend opposite knee, and hug opposite heel down. Scrunch in with your shoulders, bend your elbows. Maybe down towards the earth a couple of times by a micro half an inch, et cetera, and so on. If you do this in a modified way, you know that really always are the focus. The context is the energy we create. Having you know, a little dog in the room, like the down dog action, is often about waking up, often about bringing energy into the room and beyond, energy into the body. 
You can bend your knees to lift your tail high. You can spike your heels up. Feel free to widen your hands, especially if you feel compression in the backs of the shoulders. You might spin your fingers wide or walk your hands wider uh, than shoulder distance even. Knowing that the body is not angular, really more curves, arch, loops, spirals, finding a way to create uh, ergonomic action, to create architecture in your body that is right for you. And then again, notice the breath. Is Ujjayi Pranayama still happening? Can you come back to the inhales and exhales? The exhalation is really where we have more control. So if you're looking for the sake of uh, finding a way to catch up to the breath and finding a way to soothe intentionally, focus on exhaling when you can. Let's inhale slowly into a plank, the upward push up position. And you're welcome to adjust hands and feet. Sometimes they need to come closer or further. Right away, notice you can put your knees on the ground, especially if you feel like your lower back is taking pressure or your neck. You're always welcome to put your elbows down or fists down instead. Take another big free inhale in the plank pose. Notice the experience. And exhale to down dog, spin your tail high and your toes up. Use your hands to pull, inhale out into a plank, upward push up position. Use your hands to push, chest down, downward facing dog pose. Good. Inhale, pull forward. Exhale, press back. Good. Take an inhale, spike your heels way high up into your tippy toes. Exhale, bend your knees relatively generously, 20 degrees or so. Inhale, spin your tail up and press your armpits towards your ankles, your heart towards your bent knees. And exhale, drive your heels towards the earth, classic dog pose. Sometimes this is easier done when things are a little shorter between the knees. Inhale, tippy toes. Exhale, bend your knees. Inhale, tail up and armpits back to extend the spine. And exhale, drive your heels low. All right. Inhale out into a plank, upward push up position, shoulders over your wrists. Exhale your knees to the mat, so plank on the knees. Take another inhale and slow on the exhale, bend your elbows and lower all the way to the earth. Hug your elbows in, tops of your feet down if it feels good, kick the earth. Inhale, cobra pose, Bujangasana. Lift your heart up and stay up to breathe. In this first cobra, think about whatever hitch you are at. It gives you a good enough place for you to rest a little bit of your energy in. So you don't have to do it all the way. You just want to sustain. And notice the neck is doing it all. It's like your chin for sure. Use your middle back. Use your pelvis pressing into the ground. Just take another in breath when you're ready. Use the exhale to bring your upper body down to the mat. Let's do it two more times. Inhale, Cobra, Bhujangasana. Exhale, lower the upper body down. One more time with your own breath and timing. Curl your toes under and from knees or toes, inhale up through plank or table. And exhale back to downward facing dog pose, tailbone high and heels low. And take a couple of breaths. Down dog definitely stretches the back of the body. You reach through your shoulders like you're trying to push the earth away. You might actually find that extension affects your middle back, the back of your waistband. Whatever feels good though, use the pose to the advantage of your awareness. What can you notice? How can you be with the posture, the experiences offered by it? Inhale, bend your knees and look forward. And your exhale, walk your feet up to your hands and let's hang in a ragdoll form of forward folding. You can choose your feet, you might widen them, it's distance, you might bend your knees a great deal so that you can dangle your upper body down. You can let the arms pop down, palms up, you might grab for the elbows or interweave the fingers somewhere and sway side to side. Sometimes it's nice to kind of make figure eights from above with your tailbone, you shift a little bit in your shoulders, maybe a shoulder extension posture, like interweaving the fingers at the base of the tail would feel nice for this last few breaths, you're interweaving your fingers at the base of your skull. Not pulling or forcing, but letting the pendulum action and gravity pull on us to have effect. And the next couple of exhales as you relax the neck and the jaw and let the weight of the skull hang, let your hands slowly release out of any chosen grip to hang towards the earth. And choose your feet for sun salutations. We're going to move through classical version with many options to it. And let's try half lifting. Inhale and roll your heart forward, flare your tail back. Feel free to bend the knees and press the hands into the legs. Exhale, forward fold, hang deeply. 
You can inhale, halfway lift, shortening the hamstrings and the low back to peel your heart up. Exhale, fold in deeply. And one more time, just like Cobra with your own breath, your own lung space, your own length and timing. And as you hang the head and forward fold, you sense your heels and soften the arches of your feet. Slowly round up over five breaths towards standing. Take your time. Drag the head, drag the fingertips, stack the body slowly. When you emerge, just like a new spring plant or flower curling towards the sun at the top, you can use a couple exhales maybe to roll your shoulders down your back and move around a little bit. Especially if you're practicing alone, you know, usually you might notice like, wow, your shirt doesn't actually have to get fixed. <laughs> that way if you do it, you're doing it because you've decided you want it to be different, right? That's the idea. Like any action taken in power, taken with agency, is good action. It comes from kindness and wisdom. And this is Sama Sitihi, same on all sides, standing pose, Sama means same. Sitihi, just stand in or at your own awareness or attention. I suggest that you close your eyes if you feel safe, or you look at a spot around you that is a little bit benign, softly, like you look at clouds in the sky. And try to stack your body over your plumb line. Feel the feet orbiting around uh, that stance of gravity, spinning planet revolving universe. You'll never really be still. This is also a nice moment not only to notice how you stack your bones over your own plumb line, how you find your sense of gravity, but also how you stand with all things. What is your standing in this lifetime? What is your standing with yourself? What do you stand for? Who do you stand with? Take an inhale in through your nose. Open mouth, exhale, H-A. Good, on your next inhale, flutter your eyes open if you close them. On your next exhale, tune into what's around you. Surya Namaskar A. Inhale your arms out and up, reaching upward, Urdhva Hastasana, pause and breathe. Definitely feel free to bend the elbows or bring the arms wider. It gives you agency to relax your shoulders and lift your heart up. If pressing the palms feels good for you, feel free. If looking up feels good for you, feel free. Root your feet down. Recruit some strength from your low belly. Take another inhale to stretch up and exhale. Swan dive down in there's room. Stick out your tail, bend your knees, and it accommodates your body. Inhale, halfway lift, unroll your heart. Exhale, forward fold, hands down, step back, plank pose, pause. You can support yourself in any form of plank. Remember, table is a form of plank. Laying on your belly is a form of plank, but pause. We're gonna do a lot of these vinyasas. Um, I'll usually cue through the whole thing, the kitten caboodle with Chaturanga Dandasana. Now, I totally recommend that you don't do them all. Hang out in plank, lower down to your belly and take cobra, do a knees, chest, chin, something else that feels good. It's a palate cleanser. It's supposed to rinse clean what was and make space for what is new. Take an inhale, shift forward. Exhale, chaturanga, bend your elbows, lower about halfway down. Inhale, upward dog, pull your heart through your arms to stay straight and kick the tops of the feet down, knees engaged. Exhale, down dog, curl your toes, tail high, heels low. A few breaths and Adho Mukha Svanasana, the down facing dog. Oh, I'm seeing them, they look good uh, from uh, afar in the room and on the screens. Take a big free inhale and through your nose, please. And open mouth, exhale, each A. Inhale in again through your nose. Like a fierce sign in each day. And in through your mouth, like a straw. Out through your nose slowly. Ujjayi Kanyama. In through your nose, Ujjayi. Out through your nose, Ujjayi. Good. Pressure in the hands. Study the grounding there. Take an inhale. You might bend your knees up forward and exhale, step or float to the top of your mat. When you arrive there, inhale, halfway lift, unroll your heart. Exhale, forward fold into your body. Inhale, the arms up, pose, or Bhavasasana, reach to rise and inflate to stand up. And exhale, Samastitihi, let the arms come down and find neutral. Inhale, arms up, or Bhavasasana, reaching upward. Exhale, forward fold, dive down, Uttanasana. Inhale, halfway lift Ardha Uttanasana and roll to set. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana, hands down, step or float back or halfway or all the way. Inhale, up dog, Urdhva Mukha Svanasana or Cobra from the belly. Exhale, down facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana, breathe. 
in and out through your nose, into your back ribs and side ribs. Spin your tail high and recruit strength less from your neck or your jaw, and more from the integration of your hands into the earth. When you're next available, Ujjayi exhale, study your hands grounding and exhale, step or float to the top of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift, unroll your heart. Exhale, forward fold into your body. Inhale, arms up pose or Vahasasana, breathe the inflation of your body upward. And exhale to Samasitihi, return to neutral standing. A few more, Ekan, inhale, arms up, take them at your pace. Due, exhale, forward fold, Uttanasana. Trini, inhale, halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Chitauri, exhale, step or float to Chaturanga Dandasana of your choosing. Pancha, inhale. Urdhva, upward dog, or an alternative, shat, exhale, adhamukha, shanasana, dhamba. If those numbers are new, or those Sanskrit words are new, they're numbers, they're the counts of the postures in the cycle. I like them because we can start to think about it as a cycle, as opposed to pose, pose, or posture to posture. Breathe your way through, throughout. Remember that things will emerge, sensations will emerge, especially as you tune into your sensitivity. Notice them. Notice your ability to notice them. Notice your ability to be strong and to practice non-attachment with kindness. Press into your hands and on your next exhale, step or float forward, arrive on the soles of your feet at the top of your mat. Inhale, halfway lift, unroll. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, arms up pose, breathe into your back wings to rise. And exhale to Samasitihi, return to the neutral. Very nice. Take on inhale, arms up. Due, exhale, folding deeply. Trini, inhale, unroll to step. Chitvari, exhale, step or float, Chaturanga Dandasana. Pancha, inhale, upward dog, or Mukhashvanasana. Shat, exhale, downward dog, Adi Mukhashvanasana. Breathe in the Ujjayi Pranayama form. Relax the space between your eyebrows, let your back teeth fall away. You continue to notice the efficiency, which is another form of kindness that nature creates over time. It is there anything you're doing or activating that could be soft? And that's for the body, it's also for the mind, for the emotion, for the energy. Is there anything that you're not paying attention to that you could ask to wake up and tune in? That would be a good collaborator. And on your next exhale, step or float forward, arrive on your feet soles. Inhale and roll halfway. Exhale, fold in deeply. Inhale to arms up pose, or Vahasasana, reaching all the way upward. Exhale, Samasitihi, return to neutral. Last one, inhale the arms up. Exhale, fold your breath down. Inhale and roll your breath forward. Float on your exhale, chatter with the dandasana of the forelimb to stack the toes. Inhale to the back and up dog or an alternate. Exhale to the down dog posture and breathe. In through the nose and out through the nose in the Ujjayi form. Energetically, heart lungs, sort of um, energy systems tend to integrate down the arms into the fingers. But as you touch the earth, notice right, how is it that you're holding the earth? On your next Ujjayi exhale, step hop or float forward, arrive on the soles of your feet. Inhale and roll, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, arms up, pose, or Dvahasthasana, reach all the way up. And exhale, Samasthiti, bring the arms come down. Good, inhale, arms up, reach up. This time, exhale, put your left palm up and grab your left wrist with your right hand. Inhale, stretch up and exhale, side bend to your right, a form of Ardha Shangasana, push your hips to the left. Bring your heart up and your left side body, inhaling to the side. And exhale by exhale, go a little deeper or get a little softer. Grab your weight into your heels, draw your tail a little down and your heart a little up. And inhale, rise back to center. Exhale, switch the grip, flip your right palm up, grab right wrist with left hand, inhale, stretch up. Exhale, over to the left hand side, push your pelvis to the left. The embodies all arches and spiral, a little twist and turn. You don't need to flatten it between two imaginary face of love of any kind, nothing's going to squish you. Let yourself take up space, let your body be 
as it is, honor it in its own power. Inhale back to center, rise up, separate your hands. Exhale to back bend. You might practice the arms to pull the shoulder blades down like Arizona Saguaro style. Inhale, arms back up, reaching up or above the sasana. Exhale, forward fold, guide yourself down. Good. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Bend your knees and then pull your right arm up. So we're twisting to the right. Yeah, so you might have a walk uh, where you are, a water bottle. You might also float your body up higher, your bottom hand will float off the earth. And also take your uh, bottom elbow, left elbow onto your top knees, or your left hand onto your left knee to give yourself a little bit of a turn. But straightening your right leg a little bit as you go, keep bending your left knee deeper and deeper. Part of it is twisting in this action. Okay, look up if your neck allows, breath by breath, get longer on the inhale, see your spine. Rotate maybe a little deeper on the exhale, or imagine relaxing a little more on the exhale. So if your neck doesn't like with enough pain, your head or traction in the neck. Good. One more inhale, feel grounded in your heels, spin your heart to the right. And exhale, forward fold, left switch. And both knees, or bend your right knee, right hand down, inhale, left arm up. And again, you might climb your elbow up or push yourself up higher, especially if it feels like low back hurt before you, for you or your neck is so tight. As you rotate open and up, get creative with height, creative with angle. And use your breath to create space where things are stuck. Twisting is a good way to mobilize, both from a physiological point of view and from an energetic practice. We weave together the container around our own enlightenment sphere, our ability to move upward towards uh, unity. Take another inhale. And exhale, hang forward, fold. Widen your feet out in this distance, six to eight inches, maybe in there wider for cotton boot shasana. Bend your knees enough that you can take two feet, same fingers around your big toe, the finger to toe pose. You can half lift if you'd like, straighten your elbows, spread your tail with bent knees on an inhale, and exhale, fold deeply by bending your elbows. And bend your knees up this whole time. This is not really about straightening your legs, but instead about folding the crease of your hips and curling, rounding your spine towards your legs. So you can do that at a lot of different angles. Even if you always straighten your knees, you might try bending them occasionally just to give yourself more cards to play with when you are that. Inhale like a half lift, unroll your heart. And exhale, fold. Soften your knees, release your fingers to the mat, and step your left foot back to the back of the mat, a long, low lunge. Kind of switch the right foot forward. You can touch the fingertips or them up to nearby furniture or stacks of books or blocks. Inhale, cow lunge. Keep your back knee, pull your heart forward, up and up. Exhale to cat lunge, straightening your both legs and round it in. Do this with your own breath and at your own pace. Inhale, cow lunge, off through the first few. And exhale, cat lunge. You're always welcome to work this in the lower vector with the back knee down the whole time. We're going to go back and forth by dipping the knee low or tapping into the earth and back leg. And be kind to your hip sockets. Notice where things are stretching, where things are coming together, compressing. And notice how much work the hands are doing. Try to let the lower body emerge as a leader. Try to let um, the workforce have a little power as a blur of what happens. And it begins in the individual level. That's always where it starts. So that's where change emerges. The next time your front knee is bent, pause in a low lunge. And punch your left hand down on the earth for a lift and inhale your right arm up, twisting to the right. You can do this with the back knee down, a little more stretch for the head. Yeah, you can do it with the back knee lifted. You're welcome to let your pelvis go along for the right, twisting almost open towards the right. Or you can lift your left hip up and continue to twist a little more on both ends. Better draw your shoulder blades towards the, the back of your mat or space, just as much as you pull your collarbones forward and up. Same deal with the neck. It's always chill to hang in instead of looking up. Take another inhale to rotate and exhale two hands down to frame your front foot. Take an inhale like cow lunge and exhale to cat lunge and let's pause on the cat lunge. You're welcome to step your back foot forward to spin the heel down and come high on the ball of your left foot. A little bit of throat compression to work our lymphatic systems with the chin. To do three, but like maybe there's a little discomfort, but no pain. Be kind. Bring your forehead towards your leg. And do the same thing by drawing your front bottom ribs straight in and up into your butt. So we're working to a lymphatic chain above your small intestine. Especially as you find a way to breathe, I suggest softening your soft palate, trying not to tense the back of your throat. Ujjayini is usually what comes out when we're in this position, no matter what. Try to send it into your back ribs and side ribs. 
You might think about tucking your tail a little towards your back heel. You're curling from one side. That's very nice. Mindfully, from your heart back as opposed to the back of your neck, inhale, cow lunge, look forward, bend your front knee. With one or many steps, exhale your left foot up to meet your right foot, hang and forward fold at the top of your mat. And inhale, halfway lift, unroll your heart. Exhale, forward fold, soften your knees and step your right foot back on the lunge. Same business, but on the opposite side. Once your hands are settled, you feel supported. Inhale to cow lunge. And exhale to cat lunge. And follow your own breath. You're always welcome to linger for extra time. Uh, but the shifting back and forth starts to work into the circuit of our hip flexors, front to back. And relax your neck and hang your head along the way. Especially if you like experiments, you might try closing your eyes or just softening how much your hands are really doing anything for you so that you have a little bit of extra room. All right. And the next time uh, your front knee is bent, pause in the low lunge and plant your right hand down and inhale, left arm up, twisting to the left. You can put your right knee down if you wish. You're always welcome to do the same variation from side to side. You can turn your foot out a little, the front foot if you need to, and make space in your pelvis. Acknowledge the power of the diversity of your body, that it is different, that it will require your attention. You're not molding it into being one conformity thing or idea. On your next exhale, two hands down to bang the front foot. Inhale, cow lunge. Exhale, cat lunge, and pause to breathe. Again, option to step the back foot forward a little. Just spin the back heel in and down. You might also come high with all of your foot and tuck your chin and your forehead towards your leg, maybe towards your knee. Try your navel in and up. And it'll be a little asymmetrical because the legs are, and that's okay. We're going to share back ribs and side ribs. Notice what it feels like. Notice the experience you're having. Turn towards what is in the way that you can here and now. And the breath is always a pathway. Notice how you're breathing and where the breath is affecting the body from an aesthetic point of view. Very nice. Leading with the muscles behind the heart as opposed to the back of the neck. Inhale, cow lunge, look forward. Exhale, slow to step forward and hold the top of your mouth. Inhale, halfway lift and roll your heart. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, arms up, pose, or Vahasasana, reach to rise and then wait to stand all the way up. And exhale to Samasthiti, reach your arms down. You may stir your nose for slowly at first. Take a big three, inhale in. And exhale, bend your knees, sink your hips low for Uttasana. Inhale your arms forward or up and breathe here. So fierce pose. I notice your ability to contain fierceness. When you think about it, you notice our ancestors, right? Some carnivorous action, the ability to defend themselves, stand up for what is needed for their right to thrive. Throw your tail out and knock your weight back. And remember that fierceness can come with things that aren't fights, right? Our ability also to stand fiercely for what it is, to stick right to what is needed, but also to know what needs to go, what's on its way out. Take another big free inhale. And exhale, fold forward, dive over your legs. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, chaturanga of your choice. Hands down, step or foot back or halfway all the way. Inhale, up dog or an alternate. Exhale, down dog and pause. So many of you know this form, but we try to go direct. Instead of swinging the leg up and back, we use the musculature at the center of the body to pull the foot through and forward for lunges. So let's try it. Take an inhale through your nose. Exhale, step your right foot forward between your hands. You probably don't have to grab it and pull it up, swing it out to the right. And let's chill. Send your back heel down to the mat. Inhale, warrior one. Rise up, arms straight in the face. Next, up by exhale, settle into the front knee bend. Make sure to straighten your back leg as much as you bend your front knee. Your back knee goes towards your twisted. You're always welcome to take crescent lunge, then up onto the ball of your foot instead. Otherwise, let that back heel be an anchor that almost is pulling your left hip back. Instead of trying to square your hips, spin your inner right thigh out to the right and up towards the ceiling, and plug your left heel down until you feel your inner left thigh 
engage and turn on or plug back through it in the form of crescent. Take an inhale to stretch up, maybe look up, exhale, chaturanga, hands down, step your right foot back and lower halfway or all the way. Inhale upward dog or an alternate, let go both legs. And exhale, downward dog. Still exhaling, try stepping your left foot directly forward between your hands, grab it and pull it up. Spin the back heel down and inhale, rise, warrior one. Arms up to frame the base and pause. You may take the time right, to settle down into it. This is classically a back bend, so it's okay if your tail is sticking out. Draw your belly in, maybe on a bunda, lift up the floor of your pelvis and low bunda so you have some container. It doesn't need to be extreme. Relax your shoulders by lifting the front of your ribcage up. You can look up just as far as the neck feels good about. Take an inhale. And exhale to chaturanga, hands down. Step your left foot back and lower halfway or all the way. Inhale to upward dog or an alternative. Exhale to downward facing dog pose. Breathe, please. Ujjayi Kayana in and out through your nose. A couple of breaths. But really not a resting pose. You're always going to be active. But it's a place to rest your awareness in. To come back to resting your awareness and your breath. And the experience that you're having. Study the sense of ground under your thumbs and on your next exhale, step half or foot forward or right on the soles of your feet at the top of your space. Inhale, halfway lift, unroll your heart. Exhale, fold, bend your knees, sink your hips for Utkatasana, the fierce pose. Inhale, arms forward, still inhaling, stand all the way up. And exhale to Samasiti, the arms come down by the sides, return to neutral standing. We'll flow it, take a big inhale in. Exhale, bend your knees, sink your hips low. Then inhale your arms forward or up, your pose, some folks call it chair. Exhale, fold forward, dive down, over your leg. Inhale, halfway lift, unroll to set your heart. Exhale, chaturanga of your choice, step half or foot back and low. Inhale, up dog or an alternate. Exhale, down dog, and still exhaling, step your right foot forward, between your hands. Back heel down, inhale, warrior one, arms up. Reaching upward, exhale, chaturanga, hands down, step your right foot back and lower down. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward dog, and still exhaling, left foot forward, right heel down. Inhale, rise, Virabhadrasana, the noble hero pose. Exhale, lower, chaturanga, dandasana, slow to the mat. Inhale, upward dog, or cobra. Exhale, downward dog, breathe. Ujjayi Kamiyama, focus on the exhales, press them away. Remember, down dog itself has alternates. You can hang in child's pose and tabletop, do something all together different. We still one move. Press into your hands and use your next available exhale to step or float forward and then on your feet. Inhale, halfway lift, unroll. Exhale, forward fold. Bend your knees, inhale, fierce pose with Kapasana. Still inhaling, stand all the way up. Exhale, Samasiti, arms come down. And let's do it again. Big three, inhale in. Exhale, bend the knees, last one, hips slow. Inhale, arms forward or up with Kapasana. Exhale, forward fold, dive down. Inhale, halfway lift, unroll to set your heart. Exhale, chaturanga of your choice, step or float back. Inhale, upward dog or an alternate. Exhale, downward dog and step your right foot forward. Left heel down, inhale, rise, warrior one. Exhale, lower, chaturanga of your choosing. Inhale, upward dog or an alternative. Exhale, downward dog and your left foot. Right heel, inhale, rise, Virabhadrasana A. Exhale, lower, chaturanga dandasana. Inhale, Urdhva Mukha Svanasana. Exhale, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Breathe in the Ujjayi form, in and out through your nose. Press into your hands and exhale, float forward, arrive on the soles of your feet. Inhale, halfway lift, unroll your heart. Exhale, fold and bend your knees, sink your hips. Inhale, fierce pose, Utkatasana. Still inhaling, stand all the way up. Exhale, Samasthiti. Very nice. Good. Inhale your arms up. And on your exhale, press your right heel down. Inhale, lift your left knee up. Thigh hangs in front of the left hip socket, 90 degree-ish bend. Take another inhale. And slow on the exhale, let's move to airplane. So you can take your arms wide as you sweep your left leg back behind you and tilt your body forward. Eventually you might think heart and foot higher than your pelvis. You might puff your heart out and look forward. 
And remember wobbling, shaking, using a wall nearby to press into is always welcome. We're gonna move to a low lunge, take an inhale. And on your exhale, start to bend your right knee and step your left foot to the back of the mat. You can put your hands on the mat, framing your front foot if you wish. Spin your back heel down to the mat and inhale to warrior two and mill your arms out, up and open. And exhale by exhale, settle down into the lunge. Let your tail stick out, your heart puff out. And reach through your arms and give yourself a little bit of uh, wiggling and wobbling into the thing. As you spin your inner right thigh up, as you strike your back heel down, a lot like warrior one, our legs are doing oppositionally divergent actions. So finding a way that is kind to your joints and feels stable without fighting. Flip your right palm up and inhale to reverse your warrior out, up and back, stay to breathe. You can slide your left hand down your back left leg. Wrap it around for binding the inner right thigh. Commit to your left heel and the depth and heaviness of your left hip as you anchor. Let your right hip pull forward and down the same way. Take a big free inhale into your right rib cage and exhale to side angle, right elbow to knee and then towards the earth and side or outside of the foot. Make your top arm up. And this is like the only side angle we're going to do. So we'll be here for a few breaths if you want to do a different version like binding, or if you want to pull it up into a standing balancing half moon, or if there's a wiggle or an action with the back knee down, give yourself some permissiveness to do your work. Next couple of exhales. Part two, notice where you are, notice what your exit would be, and take about three breaths to rise back up towards warrior two. And exhale your hands down to the mat. Bring them inside your right foot and totally your right foot up and out to the right. Spin your left heel up and lower your right knee down to the mat for lizard or dragon. You can stay on the hands or come to the forearms. You're welcome to twist this or open it up into binding the back foot for a quad stretch. You're welcome to walk your right foot out to the right and turn it out or roll to the weight of your foot. And then we'll be here for about five breaths. For some of us, this is like a little bit. Um, for the 20 ish, it feels like they're uncomfortable. Make sure again you're behind yourself. Where is your actual edge? What do you really need to be doing in life? Does it have to be so deep that you're surviving it? What, what is it for you? Like, give yourself space to notice even how you sort of self guide yourself, how do you make those choices for you? And press into the hands when you're ready. You curl the back toes under, lift your upper body up. Inhale, plank pose, step back, and exhale, chaturanga, dandasana, inhale, up dog or cobra, exhale, down facing dog pose. And we'll probably run until about 11.40 for sort of knowing a uh, time and sort of looking at what your schedule looks like. Know that again, you have the recording, you need to step away or stop and finish when you need to. Take an inhale to bend your knees and gaze forward, and exhale, step up or float to the top of your yoga mat. Inhale, halfway lift and lower your heart. Exhale, forward fold. Slowly, big long breath. Inhale up to Urdhva Hasasana, reaching upward. Keep the arms up there when you arrive. And use the exhale to plug down into your left heel. Stand up and inhale, bring your right thigh up parallel in front of you. And pause. See the moment, even though you're lifting it up, see if you can press the bottom of your right thigh or hip down, like isometrically, and give you a little stability in your body. Take a couple of inhales to consider, and exhale by exhale, three rounds of breath to transition into an airplane posture to sweep your right leg slowly back, maybe straight to the angle leg to some degree, to bring the arms out or back by the hips. To tilt your body forward. Try to bring both ends higher than the pelvis, almost like a backward bend. Puff your heart out and recruit your shoulder blades moving towards your back heel. Again, a few breaths to transition. Exhale by exhale, bend your left knee and step your right foot way back. Hands to come towards the knee of the earth. Yeah, send your back heel down. We'll find warrior two once we've landed. Inhale, rise all the way up. Exhale by exhale, settle into the lunge. Yeah, sometimes a wider step is better, a closer step. Um, I learned from a, a technology teacher recently that actually you coming over your ankle, if there's no pain for you, you don't have a damaged knee, it's likely to be just fine. So as long as you don't feel any pain, notice, notice what it's like to do it in a different way, perhaps if you're making a different choice. 
how it is to do it today. Flip your left palm up, inhale, reach forward, out, up, and back. And stay in the reverse warrior on the exhale. Inside your right hand down your back leg for support or let it float back around to the inner thigh. Breathe your left lung up and settle your left heel down. Soften your toes and then start grabbing through the earth. Remember that your knee just curls, spread, and collaborate. Take another big free inhale and exhale into the side angle pose. Reach forward and down, left arm to the left knee thigh, perhaps with a bent elbow or towards the water bottle inside or outside of your foot. You can reach around the half bind or full bind. Do any other variations that are going to you. Take a few breaths to do so. And remember, it can be different from side to side. You can run different experiments. And you can let yourself be asymmetrical. And let yourself be unique. Next three breaths, start to consider where you are and what accent point would be. Once you've started to make your way out, we'll draw back up to warrior two. I suggest using an inhale to rise. And exhale the hands to the mat. Bring your left arm to the inside of your left foot and knee and tilt your left foot up and out with the lizard. You can bring your back knee down. You can get the back toes curled or pad that back knee if it feels tender on the earth, the extra t shirt or sweatshirt. You're welcome to turn your left toes out to stay on the hands, but it comes to your forearms or to a pop. Or, you know, if you don't want to feel a little lifted, if you want to feel more relaxed, point over the seat of a chair facing you as a good breathe, you rest your whole upper body onto it. We'll take about six, seven breaths to be where we are. Yeah, lots of beautiful variations from everybody. Good, in the next few breaths, begin to unwind, press into your hands and lift your upper body up. You can curl the back toes under, lift the back knee, set to plank pose, and this time let's lower all the way down onto the front seam of the body. We'll do a little bit of spinal strengthening. Start with your legs down, pass of your feet down. You can widen your feet. If it feels like bringing your legs together pinches your lower back or your tail a little bit, wide feet is fine. But make sure you're not turning your thigh bones in and out of the sockets of your hips. You'll notice you need to roll your foot in and out. Yeah, and find neutral ish there and kick the ground. Take an exhale and inhale, cobra. Lift your heart up. Now, for this cobra, you might get a tent to your fingertips or walk your hands a little wider if you like. You can send your elbows forward if it feels good in your shoulder. Wider stance sometimes feels nice. You can also press and straighten your elbows if it doesn't feel like too much compression in your lower back. Again, with the neck, tuck the chin if the neck is like always bugging it. Lift your heart forward on its way up. Take your feet down, take another big three inhale, and exhale slow, bring your upper body down. Hit you with your fingers behind you as your tail. If that doesn't work out, you can straighten the upper shoulder. You can grab a t-shirt or a strap to hold between, or take your hands out with your palms down and keep these in like close airplane wings. Exhale the air you have. Inhale, lift your upper body up, extending fingertips or knuckles towards the back wall. And on the exhale, press your pelvis down and lift your legs up if you want to breathe in. Yeah, work your legs towards straight. When you're lifting your thighs off the mat and breathe forward to your front ribs. You can always hang your head, just a lot in your neck. Take another inhale. And exhale, bring it all down. You can bring one ear and cheek to the mat or set your palms for a pillow. You can bring your forehead and face down. So pick an ear, pick a side, and pick away your left. You can bend your knees and drop your feet from side to side to loosen your low spine if you need to, or wag your safe on your dog tail side to side. I'm going to offer one last back bend. I'm going to offer down your ass in a bow pose, but if that's not a pose for you, please use sphinx instead. Come up onto your elbows and you can choose to bend knees if you're looking for more pressure in the low back. It's just a kinder way. Otherwise, you might bend into your knees from belly down and grab a hold of your feet. 
from the outside edge with the thumbs down. Alternatives are always welcome. You can open up that stilly or you have, so there's a little tone in your little belly. And then inhale, begin to kick into your hands. Keep your thighs up off the earth. Keep your toes forward, roll forward. Try to relax between your neck and your shoulders in the front seam so there's space for your shoulder blades to come towards your tail. Look up if your neck allows. Take another couple of breaths. Breathe up into your collarbones where there's still space. And exhale, slow to release, come all the way down. You can look the other way if you wish. You're always welcome to release any tension that's accrued. Back then, in the belly down position, put some pressure in our adrenals, you know, to the part of us that says, oh, fuck, we're there, actually, in a way. Um, and so you might notice that we're working with vagal toning by turning on just a little bit of pressure, just a little bit of that reaction, and then practicing soothing, practicing our self power to say, I'm not attached to that experience. I had it, now it's over, and I'm having this experience now. Give yourself permission to work just as deep into those pressures as feels right for you, which might not be super deep at all. Remember, your body is a sustained thing. Try to use it as if you want to do yoga when you're 115. Bring your head back to center and bring your hands under your shoulders and pressure yourself to the table. You can take a few cow cats on the table if you like, move around a little bit if you wish. And take your hips off to one side and bring your uh, feet off to one side and bring your pelvis to the mat and your legs out in front of you. You can scooch forward into your space a little bit. We're going to roll down onto the back today and work into a little bit of back bending, class back bend from this position. Opportunity, we're only going to do one set, but we'll stay for a little while, which means you get to come out whenever you'd like to. The opportunity to do um, upward facing bow or to do bridge pose or um, the sarvanga form of Setuban Sarvangasana. Roll down onto your back slowly. Bend your knees and bend the soles of your feet close up to your hips. So you can feet about hips distance apart. Albert's always really worried about back then, so he probably doesn't start moving around. Exhale, push your lower back down. And inhale, lift your hips up, low back, middle back. And all your shoulder blades together underneath you. If you have a lift and you want to do, do this pose with a little more support, you can put a lift underneath your pelvis and your sacrum. You're always welcome to bend your elbows a little bit like you're doing the robot instead and point your fingertips up towards the ceiling, pushing your elbows down, capturing your hands in your hips. And we'll be here for about five more breaths at least before I pee you out. If you want to transition into Urdhva Dhanurasana, plant the hands on the mat by your ears with your thumbs in and use an inhale to lift your chest up. Some of you will rest on the hips off of your head. Just be kind with your neck and then inhale to come all the way up. And breathe, relax your neck in either posture. Try not to look too much side to side. And use the strength of your legs to originate the curve that's happening in your spine. And about three more rounds of slow deep breath. Use your exhales to offload what is no longer for you, what is no longer you. And exhale by exhale, round yourself down. Slowly one bow, one at a time. When your tail hits, you might roll your wrists out or drop your knees from side to side. I guess spring is here, so if your spine is uh, young and feels good, if you want to pull your knees into your chest right away, go to town and rock them all side to side. From here, I'm going to open up finishing postures to yogi's choice. So my suggestion would be like a supine twist or maybe if you have a safe practice of plow or shoulder stand already, you can take one of those. If you want to take headstand or kunchanayarasana or do handstand inverting, if that feels really good for you. I know some of you are nerds about that kind of stuff like me, feel free to do it. But now that really, you don't have to do everything you always do. You can let yourself be the you you are and how things are right now. And after about three or so minutes, we'll meet for resting on the back. So take your time unwinding and unfolding downward.
Whatever you do, move towards resting. Know that you're welcome to rest in any position. You might even have more accoutrement. You can rest with your legs up the wall or up and over the edge of a couch or a chair, maybe. You're always welcome to go classic, to take the corpse mudra, shavasana, and lay on your back with your arms and legs wide, turning out, relaxing. You can always choose to support uh, your lower back or to bend your knees and put your feet on the earth so the low back softens. Take your feet together, take your arms to a different position, like resting your hands on your heart or your belly or your hips to draw emphasis to that prana, to that aliveness of your experience. But you could always lay on your side or lay on your belly. Choose to take a meditation seat for resting instead. Whenever you do start to wind in that direction, and if you're still resolving, or, you know, your animals are also worried about your well-being and you have to take some time to pat them. Uh, just give yourself a moment. There's no rush. When you arrive there, you might consider whether you'd like to work with your eyes open or closed. In different spots, see again, soft gaze, while still turning your awareness generally inward. You can rest your body and take any last sort of wiggles or fidgets in those last 10 seconds before you decide to enter stillness. So you know that you did what you could, and now you can rest in the comfort you created for yourself. And that comfort um, is not always a, a sure thing. And let the weight of your body drop into the ground, gravity holds you. And slowly start to give over any control and manipulation of your breath, let the ujjayi go. Generally, if you can clear your breath, it's usually manipulating. Know that at first it might be a little choppy or hell, but your body is leaning towards homeostasis, towards balance, and softening, towards control of your time. You make the decision to let yourself surrender, to let yourself um, let go, to let yourself um, really practice the karyagraha, the non attachment of your identity to how things have been how things are and how they will be. But in fact, to your ability to experience these things. When it's time to come out, I'll call you up and out. Until then, practice paying attention to how things really are.
And thank you everyone who might still be with us who hasn't taken the time to take an extra rest. Thank you so much for helping us problem solve all of our computer things. Thank you so much. Uh, spread the word about these classes. I think we're going to keep trying to do them through Zoom. I know there's still some buffering issues and some sound issues and we're still learning so many things. Hi oh, Megan, it's so exciting to see all of you in this way um, and nice to be able to connect with you still and to connect with community. Um, if you need anything, reach out, contact me. You can send a message on the chat here. I'll look through all of it. Otherwise, uh, stay safe, stay well, keep practicing, and I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Have a good one.